before we begin with this incredible video with all its nostalgic value, I would like to briefly review two major parts of the channel. The first is the coffee shop members. These are fellow content creators that have joined forces with me to create amazing content. Please check them out and support. Collabs will be happening on their channels and mine throughout the next few weeks and it will likely remain this way for the near future. The second part is my membership deals. For my servers, talking to me, other members, versus battles, games, prizes, and more, you can join now for only $5 a month via Cash App. Simply comment down below if you want the Cash App discount membership. Thank you all, and without further ado, let's get back to the video. Due to what I deem to be a pretty vast physical difference that would have made this contest a bit lopsided, I have decided to make this a stats equalized battle. This makes it more interesting to me. Enjoy. So, before we start, let me talk about the breakdown approach I went with on this one since it's stats equalized. I will be reviewing three main components of each character. First one, skill and intelligence, what they have done in that department. Two, a review and measure of their hacks and abilities. And final one will be examining their gear. My sources for this is the main series books for each, not including branch off series feats. I hope you guys enjoy this. It's a very nostalgic battle for me. Without further ado, let's begin and start with Harry Potter. Born a child of a twisted prophecy, Baby Harry Potter was nearly killed by his fated rival, the Dark Lord, Voldemort. Fortunately for Potter, he survived thanks to the loving sacrifice of his parents, Lily and James. Bearing a lightning-shaped scar to remind us, as the readers, of his plot armor, Harry grew up away from the wizarding world in an effort to keep him safe. This meant growing up with his hateful relatives, the Dudleys. Eventually, Harry was old enough to attend Hogwarts, the wizarding school. This led him to begin a wild journey of magic, mystery, love, and violence. As soon as he was called to go to war with his returning enemy, the Dark Lord Voldemort, eventually this fated battle would be decided, with Harry emerging the lone survivor. Harry is renowned in the wizarding world for his courage and his quick wit in combat. Let's look at skills and intelligence. While I do joke about the plot armor of Harry, make no mistake, the boy who lived was both intelligent and skilled in combat throughout the time at Hogwarts and in his war against Voldemort. By year one, as a young child, Harry was subjected to combat many times against beings like trolls and avatars for Voldemort. Harry prevailed through teamwork, clever wit, and courage in the clutch. Although not the most skilled, nor the most powerful duelist, Harry, towards the later years of Hogwarts specifically, was well known both inside and outside the school halls for being a formidable adversary. Harry is incredibly quick in combat, oftentimes reacting before even seasoned Death Eaters like Bellatrix could hit him. While stats are equalized, it is important to note that as a counterfighter, Harry is arguably at his best. His assortment of disarming, defensive, and offensive magical spells, jinxes, curses, and hexes gives him a plethora of options to go with in a 1v1 scenario. Athletically, Harry was also a prodigy in Quidditch, and even early on was dubbed to be the next legend. He even showed his prowess with flight in combat as well, as he defeated several Death Eaters while mid-flight. Overall, Harry was by year 5 and on already one of the most skilled and best combative duelists in the verse, with notable wins and tactical achievements to his name, like beating a troll, Basilisk, multiple avatars of Voldemort, several Death Eaters, and many, many more. Let's look at hacks and abilities. While Harry did learn dozens and dozens of magical incantations while attending Hogwarts, I will do my best to keep the review of his magical arsenal to ones 
that will be useful in a combative scenario. Given that he is going for the kill, Bloodlusted Harry is being considered. A true intention to kill will allow Harry clean access to the unforgivable curses, like the Killing Curse and the Torture Curse. The Killing Curse, Avada Kedavra, is not blockable by magical means. However, it can be blocked by things like objects, and it can miss as it has to connect. Harry also has explosive charms that can level streets casually, like shown with Peter Pettigrew vs. Sirius Black. He has shield spells and charms to deflect blasts and other means of harm. He can teleport, which is called apparating in the Harry Potterverse. He has stun spells and KO spells. He has other elemental manipulation spells and can transfigure objects. He has camouflage slash illusion type spells. He has healing spells to mend things like broken noses instantly. He has a jinx that can bind you. Mind control, flame summoning manip, paralysis, dark magic slashing curses, stinging, tripping, concussive force, and flight via broomstick. Overall, Harry has an underrated arsenal that makes him a unique threat to many combatants. Gear Harry Potter will come equipped with items and gear he was known to have used in the books during combat. I will also briefly explain why they are so useful. First up, his wand. A little over a foot long, this Phoenix Core wand is what makes Harry such a dangerous magic user. The wand is a conductor and allows Harry to properly use his many forms of magic in combat. Sword of Gryffindor This legendary sword is actually made with the poison of the basilisk. This allows the user to essentially bypass durability with the cutting of this blade. This was also shown when the sword broke a horcrux. Next up, Broomstick. The Broomstick gives Harry the ability of flight. In flight, Harry has shown unreal coordination and trust with his broomstick. This allows him to pull off insane aerial feats and has led to multiple wins against enemies by using flight and magic. Invisibility Cloak If he has a chance to create space, Harry can use the cloak. This cloak will render Harry invisible under it. He can potentially use this to get the drop on a foe. Harry Potter is a legend in his own verse, and for good reason. The young wizard trained his own misfit army, and won a war against the Dark Lord himself. With his craftiness and grit, Harry Potter will for sure be a tough outing for whoever enemy he faces. Next up, we have Percy Jackson. Unbeknownst to Percy Jackson, the young boy was a demigod. Of course, this did not matter growing up for a long time, as Percy was oblivious to such things. When he was finally shown his true godly nature and was taken to Camp Half-Blood, things took a major turn for the young demigod. Very quickly, Percy was forced to endure intense training and had to bond fast with his new allies. This was because Percy was fated to help save the world on many occasions. Given his true natural power, his heart, and his fearlessness in combat, Percy soon became a legend among his peers as a true warrior of the sea. Skill and Intelligence Very quickly, after assuming training and assembling an impressive resume, it was soon apparent that Percy Jackson was a monster in combat. Being a demigod, Percy has a few inherent biological advantages when it comes to combat. For one, his mind is wired different. Appearing to others as ADD, this is actually due to his mind constantly being wired for fast-paced, turbulent combat. He also has incredible perception, oftentimes seeing things slow down in combat. Percy has bested some of the most formidable warriors in the verse. In just a short time training at the new camp, Percy was already considered one of the greatest swordsmen in hundreds of years. This includes demigods, beings with the same inherent advantages as him, and oftentimes with more training and experience. Hell, 
Percy has even gone toe-to-toe -to -toe early on with Ares, the god of war himself. He was not as skilled as this god. However, Percy was unorthodox in his approach to combat, which made him hard to deal with. He also was a nearly unrivaled elemental manipulator, with his specialty, of course, being in both water summoning and manipulation. Percy is not just a beast in one-on-one -on -one combat. Percy has many noted wins later on in the series as both a small platoon leader and a general in major conflicts. His trust in allies and his trust in his instincts allows Percy to flourish in combat. His skill with his blade is some of the best in the verse, as he has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with universe re renowned duelists and held his own. He has also one-shot monsters and beings bred for war with ease. It's safe to say that as a strategist and a duelist, Percy was quite literally born to succeed. Let's look at hacks and abilities. The great son of the god of the sea, Poseidon, Percy was destined to command water like a king. Of course, he did not fail to live up to this. Percy is a completely versatile water manipulator as he progresses throughout the series. Percy can manipulate anything from fountains of water to massive hurricanes and rivers of fire. Percy is not just dangerous manipulating water though. He showed later on that one of the perks of mastering his power was summoning water from places that used to have water. In water, Percy receives massive amps. This goes as far as healing Percy from near fatal wounds in just a matter of moments. In water, Percy has complete awareness of his surroundings and it is near impossible to catch him off guard. He can manipulate water into funnels and tornadoes with even massive hurricanes. He can process things at a much faster rate in combat given his demigod heritage. He can also instantly revamp stamina with water. Percy can also manipulate other forms of water like vapor. He also has the mark of Achilles which can boost his durability. This basically allows Percy invulnerability to damage except for a vulnerable spot which is on his back I believe. He also showed that through water and water life he can neg magic and hacks like illusions. Now let's look at gear. First up is Riptide. This is the trusty, altering sword of Percy Jackson. Disguised as a pen, Percy can instantly transmute it to sword form with just a thought. On top of this, if lost in battle, the pen will eventually always return to Percy's pocket. Blackjack, the Pegasus. This is of course a magical flying, mythological horse race. This horse grants Percy the ability to fly. Of course, due to ha his hacks as a demigod, Percy can telepathically talk to any animal race that was once related to the sea, which includes the Pegasus. This allows him more creativity in combat using the flying horse. Overall, the boy of the sea, Percy Jackson, is one of the most feared demigods in the history of his verse and is a young warrior all people should respect. So, if these two legendary combatants, two legendary iconic figures from my childhood were to clash in a stats equalized battle, who do I favor? Well, let's look at the three categories first. Skills and intelligence, I favor Percy already one of the most famous and skilled combatants in his verse which includes gods i just think he has a pretty sizable advantage in that category over harry who simply does not have as much skill and experience as percy looking over at hacks i favor harry he has more versa versatility especially when we look at it from a stats equalized perspective all the things he brings to the table with his multitude of spells jinx curses and hexes uh, it's a lot being thrown at Percy and I think it's a more versatile arsenal in a stats equalized scenario finally gear um, I think it's tied um, Harry 
technically has better gear, although I think the flight um, gear is much better for Percy. And Harry's a lot more reliant on his gear, so it's more important to him, but that doesn't mean it's better. So I don't think that one as matters but as much, but in the end, who do I see winning this? I got Percy. I think his water manipulation, hit the amount he can summon, the storms he can summon, the area of effect he has, and his skill as a fighter and a tactician, I think will eventually be too much for Harry, who can create distance and keep him away with his versatility. But Percy is much more skilled in combat, and I think that matters too much here. I think he closes the distance and eventually most likely either drowns him or finishes him off with Riptide. In the end, I favor Percy Jackson, the boy of the sea, over Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Anyways, guys, if you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything as YouTube usually doesn't send notifications. But anyways, it's been your boy, YFE, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.